All right, we're running a 60-second ad break, and when that ad break concludes, we'll begin our stream proper. Hope everyone's doing excellent out there on the old internet. Just give me a minute, or, well, you know, about less than a minute, and then we'll get going. Excited for a night of model kit building. Uh, the Zwart is a far easier kit than the Providence Gundam, so uh, it should be a nice little change of pace with no polycaps and no stickers. Just a lot of cool parts. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about some video game news and some wrestling news and a little bit more about Twitter because of course, and all kinds of things. And of course, anime in the second hour, cause I got a new show, the last new show probably of the season for me to start. And then also some, uh, show that, you know, episode two of a show, uh, looking forward to hanging out with all of you on what might be a very chill Saturday. Who the fuck knows? But we're going to get started with the stream in just a moment or two. I would recommend getting ready for it because it's coming your way. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Build With Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit. I'm going to hang out with all of you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the leg of the site, the tier two blue emote in the chat. If you are currently a subscriber, you can apply with those emotes. If you are not yet a subscriber, you can say hi or use other people's emotes or you have the option. If you're, if you're really feeling punchy, you just be a lurker and not say anything and just hang out. Um, it's a Saturday night. We're going to work on a model kit. I've got parts of that model kit done, just a little bit of that model kit. We did the head the head here of the Zawart Heavy. Uh, we're working on the chest right now of the Zawart Heavy uh, high grade from uh, Witcher Mercury. Thank you, Dustin, for purchasing uh, for purchasing the gift card to USA Gundam Store that I used to buy this kit. It's very nice. The rarest of all ways to support what I do here. Um... Okay, we got no hellos in chat or highs in chat, no emotes in chat. That's okay. It happens. Oh, Aristvan is here. Hello, Aristvan. Happy to have you here. Um, oh, that's right. I'm not doing a local. I'm not doing a local recording tonight because I stream out some stuff directly after the stream. Uh, so I won't do a local recording, and I will just put the vod out so people will hear my pre-show vod stuff. Uh, but happy to have you here, Aristofan. Yeah, this might be a, a quiet evening. People might be out and about doing some stuff, watching some other streams, hanging out. Uh, we're going to raid probably over to Loading Ready Run, who usually don't stream late enough for us to raid them. They're usually like wrapping up their streams. But I believe that uh, uh, good old Brendan Beach Dairy is doing his anime wrap up. And we'll get into like, I think like an hour into that stream. I think we'll go and raid. I'm going to double check that, but I believe that's who we'll raid tonight, uh, which is great because we rarely get to raid uh, those front folks. Yes. Yeah. He's not starting till 10 PM Eastern. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll miss an, an hour there, but we'll go hang out and that'll probably go for a while. So we'll go hang out with, uh, with beach on a Saturday night uh, and do that. Um, because uh, uh, beach, very knowledgeable about anime watches different stuff than I do. So it's a nice perspective to go see somebody else doing something a little different, hitting it from a different angle. You know what I'm saying. You know what I mean. Um, I'm looking forward to working on this Zwart more. So I guess we'll we'll just get into it. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, looks like we've got kind of a light evening. And that happens now and again. Uh, before we get into it, I will remind you that there is a cool event happening uh, Pat celebrates six years of streaming. That's Thursday, July 20th, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. That's my normal stream time. My first ever stream was six years ago on a Thursday. And so it's really fun to do that, to celebrate that. Uh, the Death Scythe Hell High Grade should arrive. It, it, uh, it looks like it'll be here on Monday. Uh, that is the kit that I will be working on. Um, I'm going to click the, uh, let me just click the shipping information, make sure that's all on the up and up. Uh, but that is scheduled to arrive uh, on Monday. Yeah, Monday end of day is what, we're, is what we're looking at here. And I do give the, uh, you know, the plus or minus um, of a couple days there so it can be fashionably late. But yeah, the plan is to build the heavy arm, or not the heavy arms, uh, the Death Scythe Hell. 
uh, high grade, which is a premium Bandai kit. I'm looking forward to working on that. Um, whatever kit I'm working on, be it this or Lego or whatever it is, it won't be the Zwart probably by next Thursday, but whatever I'm working on, I'll pause, build the, the death scythe, because we build death scythes on the stream, and then when the death scythe's done, we'll go back to whatever I was working on. Uh, the next kit we're working on here is a Lego set, but it should be a one stream build because it's a very uh, tiny amount. Why are... Why are there fireworks going off? What the fuck? There are there are literally fireworks happening right now, and that's rude, and I don't like it. We gotta center this here. Er, well, you know what I'll do. Boop. Let's zoom in a little bit. Nice and easy. Yeah, there are fireworks going off. It's just a Saturday in July. Why do you still have fireworks? And why are you shooting them off illegally? Come on. It's just rude. Uh, so, Zwart Heavy. If you missed uh, Thursday's stream where we started this kit towards the end, uh, this kit uh, includes no poly caps, which is, uh, I believe, every kit in the this line, uh, the Witcher Mercury line, do, do, uh, do not include poly caps. And, uh, somewhat even more surprisingly, no stickers. I, don't, I could not tell you, friends, the last time I built a... Bandai model kit that did not include at least eye stickers. But of course, this is, you know, a grunt and it kind of has, it's a grunt that kind of has laser eyes. Uh, so it does, it has the Master Chief like helmet sort of, it's sort of a Master Chief helmet on it. See it there. But, uh, but yeah, no stickers required. I don't even really see the, the render, I think is probably actually the better way to look at it. Um, but yeah, that's surprising to me. That that has no, uh, so yeah, we're not dealing with any stickers on there. The polycaps is like, like I said, that's pretty common with this particular kit. So I wasn't like, I wasn't shocked by that. All right, make sure this part is facing the right way. Yeah, all right. Okay, that just kind of, yeah, oh, there we go. It kind of snap fits, all right. Uh, that snap fit did not feel great, I'll say, but it, it worked, so we'll take it. And then, which of these nubbins are not the same, but they're very similar, I think? So, maybe they're the same. Eh, we'll find out later if I've messed up the nubbin, which is basically acting like a polycap, let's be real. That's just a fake polycap right there. Uh, oh, and then we're almost ready to attach the head we can just attach the head early um i mean we'll, i guess we'll wait until we build a chest and we'll put the head on it uh with those stickers i added this to my wish list nice aristophan yeah yeah i mean this is a pretty straightforward kit right as far as high grades go like i don't think we're going to finish it tonight but i think we're definitely going to finish it on monday you know that kind of thing uh so actually we might work out if I finish this on Monday, that Lego set I might finish like during the stream and might like just go a little long and then we'll start the death scythe on Thursday. I don't know. It might actually just work out and I won't have to pause a build because I don't love pausing a build, but at the same time, I got to do something special for my six year stream anniversary, which I sometimes call it, but not every time. I don't always call it a stream anniversary, but that's what it is. Because I didn't celebrate my five year because I forgot to do that. And then it was past the date and then I didn't feel like doing it. And I was like, oh, I guess I could do my five years of being an affiliate, but that's not as fun. You know, I would I would like celebrate partner if I ever got partner. If that ever fucking happened, I guess I would celebrate that. But not affiliate. I'm going to panel on this now just because it's going to be harder to uh to do later probably so we'll just get in there just do something nice nice and easy and i don't even know what will be seen and what won't be i just know that if i can see that line it'll be easier to do it now than later so we'll just do that now and then pop this cap here all right what should we let's what do we got going on today what did we talked about today um so uh, a couple short Twitter things. There's no big Twitter bullshit, 
um, the small ones. Uh, there is a thing where they have switched your, they have switched everyone's default settings about direct messages because you could you could choose uh, uh, originally you could choose like oh anyone that follows me or I follow anyone I follow not follows me that would be weird anyone I follow can DM me or you could set it to um, you can make a request anyone can DM. It doesn't immediately go through. You have to like read the request. It doesn't go to your normal DMs. It goes to a little thing. And then you see a message and you can like be like, oh, I actually don't want to read this message. It's from an obvious bot or or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to say no to that. Uh, well, they made a change. The new default is that people who are verified can send DM requests to you by default. And then also people who you follow. And then even if your setting before was anyone, you have to go in and change that. So that's nonsense. And also, apparently, it doesn't always take the first time. So if you really want those DMs or if you want to make sure that verified people who you don't follow can't just fucking DM you. And by verified, of course, I mean Twitter blue people that paid Twitter money. Um if you, you, you got to make sure for that. So you got the two ends of it. You got like my end where I want people to be able to reach out to me because I don't want to have to follow every fucking person who might ever be interested in, to, in talking to me. Um, but also uh, those folks that want to keep their shit locked down so they're not getting random requests from people they, that decided to pay money. Now, speaking of deci people decided to pay money. Um, so, uh, we got a, uh, uh, somebody there who had, who does pay Twitter to do stuff, um, saying, got the answer from Twi Twitter support ad sharing is only currently available to the handpicked lucky ones. So there are a bunch of Elon, uh, stands who are upset because they aren't part of the lucky few, the chosen. Remember, Twitter Blue was supposed to democratize the verified and democratize Twitter and make it open to everybody that wanted to pay money um, and not just this weird select few. But uh, if you want to get paid for your fucking terrible engagement numbers, uh, you you can't. And uh, it's a select few. So uh, people are... People who are garbage are upset about that. And then people who are, uh, who would never are laughing about it. So that, that's, that's your one Twitter update. Here's the other one. This is Elon, uh, replying to a request, uh, that somebody had, uh, to him, uh, for comment. Let's see. Oh, I need a 24 and a 25. Okay. Uh, we're still negative cash flow. Due to 50% drop in advertising revenue plus heavy debt load. Need to reach positive cash flow before we have the luxury of anything else. Um, so it's very funny that he's just like, yeah, uh, we had a huge drop in our advertising. Now, of course, he, he uh, blames everyone but himself for that. Uh, but yes, the, the huge drop in that. And then also... Um, don't ask him specifically what the heavy debt load is because it's him. Twitter is in heavy debt because of him, because of part of the buyout agreement is that Twitter took on some of his debt to buy Twitter. Uh, and the company is doing worse directly because of him. Harold just resubbed at uh, tier one for 68 months. Thank you so much, Harold, for doing that. Appreciate you very much. Uh, uh, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, 68 months is so many months. It's, it's almost incredibly nice right now. It, it, it's nice. It's still, it's still good. 69, still 68, 69, we're great. 68, pretty good. But, uh, also welcome back, Harold. Glad you're, uh, uh, back safe and sound. Um, I will be building the Lego set that you purchased for my birthday, uh, next after this kit is completed. So in, in the short future. Uh, in the not so distant future, I will be putting together that cool little Lego car. Uh, and that, that'll be fun. But yeah, thank you for resubbing. Appreciate that. Um, it's just very funny that 
Elon's just like, oh, yeah, we don't have any money. We're, like, really in trouble. She's like, yeah, dude. It's so weird. It's so weird that you suddenly have, like, negative cash flow. That advertisers, as soon as you took, in the, in the lead up to you taking over, as soon as a lot of their contacts at Twitter, people that worked there that were their contacts, as soon as those folks started, you know, getting laid off, suddenly people were like, uh, I'm a little worried about this. Maybe we should wait before we start putting money into Twitter. Uh, I have a plan. I'm going to win Powerball tonight, and then I shall rescue Twitter from Elon. Oh, Harold, look, I hope you win Powerball. I hope you. I hope everybody wins. Uh, you know, I, I hope someone I know wins Powerball. That would be lovely. Don't buy Twitter with Powerball with your Powerball winnings. That's not, uh, you know, joking or not. Um, that's not a wise investment. Uh, don't don't worry about it. Um, Let's see. Is there any other of that nonsense? No. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's move from one nonsense thing to another. This is a thing that I saw on Twitter. So, you know, that's the, unfortunately, a great source for bullshit. Um, y'all hear about this Flash movie? You know, the Flash, um, a, a huge box office failure that they just forced to happen despite everything, including their other movies. Uh, and say it, but I immediately, I let the value drop some more and buy low. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, you, you all know about The Flash and, it, and, and the uh, lead, who is a fucking problem. Uh, and how they were like, no, we're standing by them. We're, we're going to stick with... Ezra, it's going to work out great. Um, it's such a big box. It's the box office flop of the year. It's terrible. Uh, and then they were like, okay, well, here's what we're going to do with this. Now, obviously, it's not the first one that w WB has done some bullshit with some of their movies uh, in Web 3.0, aka the blockchain. They have done some more of this. So I am not trying to imply that this is the new hotness, that this is like the only way to do it. It's just funny because they're immediately trying to salvage this with this terrible method. So um, uh, Warner Brothers Digital Collectibles, which is their uh, NFT Web3 branch, um, they're rolling out the Flash Web3 movie experience. Uh which is like the movie and then also a bunch of behind the scenes features and then some NFTs, some of which you can only get if you buy the better mystery version because um, they're different tiers. And one of the things they're touting is an interactive experience. Um, and that's hilarious because if you watch this trailer, if you watch this fucking trailer, it looks so bad. It's unbelievable the like weird render they had to do of the movie sets to make it feel like you're in like, you know, the bedroom or the bat cave. And it fucking looks like 90s FMV video games. It's remarkably shitty. Uh, it It's like... Surprise! Like obviously, it is no surprise that these things would look bad, but it's like perfect for that movie. <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me. Harold says, speaking of movies, apparently Max has a documentary about the rise and fall of HQ trivia coming out next week. Okay, interesting. I mean, did HQ trivia fall? I mean, I guess it did. It, you know, it certainly peaked, you know, it did have a peak, you know, I guess. I don't, I don't know if HQ Trivia needs a documentary, I guess is, I guess that's my, point. I guess that's my thought. I don't know if it needs one. It, hopefully it's interesting, but yeah, I don't know. Scott's a good dude. Uh, I have not talked to Scott in quite some time, but also got to say, 
my boy Tim ended up hosting HQ Trivia Stuff. And Tim is a delight and lovely. Uh, so that was also nice. It was nice for, for, you know, Tim to get a little bit of work there. I think I put this in the wrong one. Let's see if I can pop this out. Use a spudger. Let's just see if I can do it like that. Yeah. Okay, let's see if it was supposed to actually go in this one. Yes, I had it in the wrong spot. Uh, Scott was interviewed the documentary. Oh, the, yeah, I mean, good, good. It would be weird if they didn't, you know what I mean? Like, if they did the documentary and they were like, uh, yeah, well, here's just interviews he did with other places. We didn't get him for it. I mean, it, that happens, certainly. But, yeah, I guess you'd hope that he would be available. Um, yeah, I mean, the digital collectible thing is just garbage and terrible. Uh also, Web 3 is kind of done. The Flash is shit. Um, and then James Gunn could have just buried it, and he didn't. And you, you think, like, maybe he's like, ah, you probably, you probably should have let that one go, my dude. Probably could have let that one die. But whatever. Didn't. Uh, Activision is... There, there's very little stopping the Activision uh, Blizzard... Uh, Activision Blizzard King uh, uh, buyout from Microsoft. Uh, it's going to happen. It's going to be weird. Again, you know, consolidations, all that. Um, God, somebody brought up the statistic the other day that 10 years ago, Activision put out like 13 big, quote unquote, big games. And this year they're putting out like two. It's just a strange thing to think about that games have just gotten bigger and bigger and budgets have just gotten bigger and bigger. And they, you know, like a company like Activision will just like be like, Oh yeah, well we're going to do, uh, we're going to put out call of duty. Probably they haven't announced call of duty. There's going to be a call of duty. Uh, and Diablo four. I mean, shot point, like, Yes and no. He's not going to be gone. He's just going to be a Microsoft employee for a couple of years. And then he'll become the CEO of another company. Maybe even one you like. Because he likes it a lot. He really likes being the CEO of a video game company. So he'll stick around for whatever the deal implies. And then he'll leave with a bunch of money. And then he'll become the CEO of a, someone, of some other company. Because that's, that's his jam. That's, that's the thing he likes to do. So, you know. Yeah, it's going to be, going to be, going to be a weird thing. But it looks like that's all going through. Uh, let's see. Major Nelson is, uh, leaving Xbox after 20 years, uh, of being, you know, uh, social media and podcast and, you know, the guy, the, a guy, a guy, I don't know if it's a, the guy, but a guy that you remember the name of. Uh, even if you know him as Major Nelson and not uh, Larry. <laughs> but yeah, Larry's leaving, uh, which which is weird. It's a weird thing. 20 years is a long-ass time to be in one company. Says the guy that was in a company for 16 years. I can tell you, it's a lot. Um, I have not seen it yet, but I know it exists. Somewhere out there, there is fan art of Master Chief saluting Larry. It's got to be out there. I haven't seen it. But just because I haven't seen it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Somebody's made that fan art. Let's see. Um, any more game news? Um, 
Oh yeah. I we we got to talk about this like fucking tiny build shit. We got to talk about tiny build. Uh holy shit. So um y'all know my thoughts on AI how for creative my my general thought is like brainstorming. In the world of brainstorming AI is interesting in the world of translation of like there are people who are using AI to help like translate things by feeding in a script from one language translation to get another language translation of like some things like there, there's some interesting things there. I, I think like you can't just do literal. You have to like, you know, you have to look into it with, with other things. It's got to be in part. I, I think there is interesting use of machine learning, artificial intelligence, chat nonsense, right? Um, well, the folks at Tiny Build, uh, you know, published uh, uh, Tinykin and Hello Neighbor and a bunch of other, like a ton of stuff. They're, they're the people uh, with the abnormally large PAX booth. Like they've just got a lot of space at PAX for some reason. Uh, and you're always just like, what the fuck? Um, so they're, they're like, one of their ideas is, um, it, it, experimental, although they have said they have used some of it, uh, uh, but basically their, their idea is, well, we can feed Slack and Zoom and other like chat logs of employees into chat GPT. Um, and then we can look for uh, warning signs of potential problems. Specifically looking for like uh, uh, trying to figure out who's in at risk of burnout. Uh, because an inherent belief of Alex uh, Nichuk, uh, hmm, Nichprochik, uh Alex uh, from Tiny Build feels like, oh, well, we've seen that like it starts with toxic behavior. Toxic behavior is a good indication of potential burnout. And so if we can use these chat logs to figure that out ahead of time, we can then perform support. Um, now... It needs to be, it shouldn't need to be said, but toxicity has nothing to do with burnout. When especially minority groups in the games industry face a higher rate of burnout than anyone else. And usually it's because of other toxic people. Uh, that has nothing to do with it. Also, they said it was theoretical because people were, uh, they were like, they're pushing back. They're like, oh, well, this was said as theoretical things. These were taken out of context, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you said that you've been retroactively looking at the chat logs and, and uh, of employees that have left the company who you identified as is burnout related to use it as information to then cross reference. So they're already fucking doing it. It's just dystopian bullshit. And they're like, oh, no one's monitoring uh, employees this way. No, you're doing retroactively and you're planning on doing it. It's, yeah. But basically the idea is, um, again, the idea that like, Using AI as a replacement for HR, who are not your friend, as a reminder, HR, uh, the HR department is not your friend. Uh, they are not there for you. They serve the company you work for. They don't serve you as an employee. Uh, you are the you are the resource in the R. But using AI for that is just like, no. No, nah, it's... Uh, basically their, yeah, their ideas of like, what is a controversial view? Also, part of this was that they were like, oh, well, one thing that we're planning on doing, because they haven't done this yet, is uh, well, we'll do questionnaires to employees and we'll ask, 
hey, who's someone from another department that you like to, to you know, that you've engaged with socially or that you, you know, you find yourself, uh, whatever, like approaching. Um, and then they'll start looking at who's not in that list, who it doesn't end up on anyone's list. Like what employees who might be problematic or toxic or approaching burnout are the people that are not socializing. And it's like, oh, oh, you mean folks that are like not in the normal social group because they are outside the norm. They are a minority in the company. Hey, welcome Raiders. Vegas uh, decoy just raided. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, happy to have you all here. Uh, welcome Raiders. Uh, I'm Pat Bear. I build model kits and Lego sets. I'm currently working on the Zoart Heavy. We are talking about a uh, uh, nightmare thing from the uh, video game company Tiny Build. The uh, talking about using Chat GPT to monitor their employees, looking for signs of burnout, uh, which is just a, a nightmare, a nightmare thing. And then also defending that possibility. Just re real weird. Yeah. I don't really have much to say with that. Uh, it's not good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll say, uh, I agree with U.S. Santa, uh, uh, UC Santa Cruz associate professor, Maddie Bryce with, uh, a great and horrific example of using AI uncritically has those in power taking it at face value and internalizing its biases. Yes. Cause also reminder that those there, there's a biasy. And again, uh, if you're looking at like, oh, who in the company doesn't socialize with other people, they could be problematic. Those could just be people in minority groups that don't, that are excluded. Could just be that. Or introverts could also just be that. Uh, this build is pretty fun, Vegas. Um, it, it, there's no stickers and no polycaps. I mean, the Witcher Mercury kits don't have polycaps in general. Um uh, but yeah, this is a pretty straightforward build that I have uh, I've enjoyed so far. Uh, we have finished the head and the chest, which includes the big kind of backpack booster rockets unit here. Because this kit has uh, lots of weapons that will go on later. You can see these spots here. We're going to get some weapons on there in a bit, which is fun. Um, so... Earlier this week, we didn't talk about this on Thursday, but I want I wanted to talk about it because I think it's interesting to, to chat about this. Uh, there's a inter, internal documents uh, for all elite wrestling went around, um, kind of do with some guidelines, some guidelines that like have been in there but needed, I guess, to be clarified. Uh, that are that I would say are, are pretty interesting um, about some moves that are banned and other moves that you got to like talk to somebody about the idea being like, Hey, you can do this, but you got to like tell a producer. Now, some of that is because of the danger of those moves. Uh, and some of it is just like, well, we just don't want some people like they want to know, like they don't want like three pile drivers in a row, but they have some things that they're like, Hey, don't do this. Now, obviously there are going to be people in the company. They're just going to do it because they have the clout to just do whatever. Um, but there'll be other people that will hopefully think twice about doing these. And again, some of these are common sense because they are dangerous. And some of them are just like, yeah, probably don't do that on a Wednesday. You know what I mean? Um, but like chair shots to the head. Yeah. Um, buckle bombs. Uh, that is doing a power bomb into the turnbuckle. Yeah. Probably don't do that move anymore. It has seriously injured many people. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for the raid, of course. Um, right, we need C13. Uh, let's see. Oh, and thank you for the follow, Vegas. Appreciate that. Uh, spitting. 
Here's a big one that they don't want people to do at the old uh, AW. Initiating concussion or seizure symptoms while selling a move. Yeah. Daniel Bryan fucking did that shit. And it scared the shit out of it. I mean, hey, great. Good job. You made me think you were seriously injured. Congratulations. But like, fuck off with that shit. Stop trying to make me think that you're dying. Come on. So that one I'm I'm pro. I'm pro them. Restricting that. Uh, use bleeding while in the crowd. A thing you think you wouldn't have to say, but God damn it, you do. And then also using weapons or projectiles in the crowd. Yeah, don't start swinging stuff around while you're in the audience there. Uh, taking food or drinks from fans in the crowd. That is a thing that's been happening. And making contact with fans in the crowd. Now, by making contact, they don't mean high-fiving or whatever. Or in the case of one team, going for the scissor. They're not saying don't that do that. They are just saying mostly like, hey, especially when you're fucking wrestling... Don't just be posing with the crowd and getting people, putting people at risk. Uh, and then there's some that you're like, hey, you got to like talk to people in advance about this. What? Uh, I don't know. Uh, sh- uh, sh- uh, shout point. I don't know. I don't know what Ant Stream Arcade is, so sorry, cannot help you on that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that that is something that I will look at at another time. I, I don't know what I don't know what that is, and I'm not gonna talk about it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, don't know what that is. Not not, not gonna not gonna be a, a point of discussion tonight. Um, yeah, I just yeah I don't know what it is. Um, so like I said, those were the like, Hey, these are things you're not going to do. And again, I agree with, I think all of them, right? Like, I'm just like, nah. And there's some, they're like, Hey, if you want to do these moves, you got to talk to your coach or the producer. And a lot of that is going to be like, yeah, do that. Or, Hey, uh, the next match after your, someone else is doing that move. So baby, don't do these top rope moves. Um, like intentionally bleeding or throwing people into the ring steps or the commentary table. Because apparently not too long ago, there was a commentary table spot and they didn't tell the re- the announcers or the commentators. The commentators didn't know. And it's like, yeah, that's a little bit more realism, but like also don't. <laughs> you should tell them. So they're ready for like a big body to come at them. Uh... Yeah, stuff, stuff. Like, they want the ring crew to know if you're going out into the crowd or the staging areas or all that. It's like, yeah, this is all common sense stuff that they would like people to know about. Um, weapon usage and, and various objects and stuff like that. Yeah, all that stuff is makes a lot of sense. Throwing and throwing those objects. Uh, strangling spots. Like, yeah, you probably tell somebody you're going to do that. Make sure it's in the second hour of the show. Um, and then, yeah. And then any physical, uh, any physicality involving referees, managers, extras, celebrities, or special guests. Like, yeah, you should probably tell people that stuff. Make sure they know what's going on. It's like, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I just thought that was funny. Yeah, it's like, yeah. And it's like, you know, uh, later Dave uh, Meltzer kind of give a follow-up saying like, yeah, these are guidelines that just like went out with, because there's some new, newer people over the last couple of years and they wanted to send it out, but it's not going to, it's only going to be enforced for some people. It's not going to affect other people. I believe that a couple of those banned, quote unquote, you know, restricted moves are happened tonight. And the people were like, Oh, I thought they were, these are banned. I was like, no, that's not what that means. And again, we knew who that was going to apply to and who it wasn't. It's fine. A lot of that, a lot of that is just like, yeah, don't do the same moves other people are going to do. Because <laughs> it's weird. That sometimes, sometimes that shit is weird. And you're like, oh no. No, but I, 
But I w we were going to do that spot. Uh-oh. And then you guys suddenly change your mind and do all that and you throw everybody off. Too bad. Let's see. Uh, other stuff to talk about. Tonight. Uh, let's see. We'll go to uh, there. We are, of course, going to talk about some anime in the second hour. I've got a couple things to chat about that I uh, have been playing uh, that I think will be fun to to converse with y'all about. Let's see. These nubbins look like, yeah, they're supposed to be there. Okay. Um, oh, we're just getting results. We're just getting the results from stuff. So I'm going to try to avoid it because I'm not watching Collision right now because I'm streaming. So I'm going to watch that after the stream tonight. Check out all of that. Let's see. Was there anything from the world of AEW? Brian Pillman Jr., who was released from AEW, was seen at the uh, Performance Center for uh, WWE. Uh, and I think that would not be terrible for him. I'm not the biggest Brian Pillman Jr. fan. I, I you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Brian Pillman, certainly. I think his son is fine, but not like, not necessarily like, doesn't really have it, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, could get there. And I, I think the training center could be a good spot for him. I don't, you know, again, we don't know if that he signed a deal or he's uh, doing a tryout or whatever, or if he was just visiting a friend in Florida. Um, let's see, other stuff here. I wonder if we know who the, the name for who showed up on Impact. I wonder. If that is, uh, if we know that yet. Okay, we do. Great. It's Eric Young. Okay, yeah, Eric Young, we knew had left WWE, his time in WWE working there uh, as a trainer, I believe. And then he showed up at Impact and uh, wrestled. It's like, yeah, it makes sense. It's a good spot for him. That was the rumor that he was going to be the uh, in a tag match. At Impact. Impact doing some wild shit. Again, Impact uh, consistently is the company that just kind of like still runs. And you're like, oh yeah, Impact. All right. Yeah, they're still doing their thing. Great. Okay. You know, they're, they're, they're still out there. Uh, basically, he was there for... Uh, yeah, like very little time in WWE. So good on. Them. Also, um, in one of my favorite things is not every time that someone leaves, but a lot of times when people leave Impact, uh, they get murdered. Their characters get killed off because he was stabbed uh, in December uh, by his protege. Uh, hey, Lord Crash, and welcome, welcome. So it, that to me is funny. He's like, yeah, he got better. He somehow got stabbed and it was okay. Mickey James was, was pushed in front of a train. Like a lot of nonsense in Impact. Uh, so it's like, it totally makes sense that he would just be back. Like it's no big deal. But yeah, good for him. Glad that he is uh, back there. It's a good place for him. Uh, yeah, good for him let's see I need other parts here I need B11 as well let's get a few of these parts out as we work on this arm and let's see any other things Oh, something about Mercedes Monet, perhaps. Oh, possibly. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry that I don't have like a ton of things to talk about tonight. I really just don't have uh, uh, a lot going on these days. It was a, a pretty relaxing weekend. I did mow the lawn today. I did the front and side lawn, uh, which was fine. I, I would describe that as a 
totally okay experience. Uh, you know, I'm still, my allergies are, are bothering me. It wasn't like fun to do, but it wasn't the end of the world uh, to do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're talking with some friends about strike stuff um, and, and figuring all that stuff out. A few of my friends uh, in LA and New York who are part of SAG, but not part of the WGA getting ready to striking out there. Uh, Lord Chris, as I assume you're highly anticipating the Gex remasters. I've never played a Gex, never played a Gex game. I know who Gex is. I'm aware of, I'm culturally aware of Gex, but I, I never played a Gex video game. And I don't think I would start at, I don't think I'm ever going to, you know what? I'm going to say that right now. I'm fairly sure I'm never going to play a Gex video game. I'm just going to go out and say it. It, it Look, it, it's possible that someday I might. There might be a reason for me to uh, to get to get into Gex, but I don't I don't expect that that to be a, a possible to be a thing. And maybe uh, John says we watched all of the nanny last year. There is an episode where Fran's character refuses to cross a picket line. Nice. And John says, I got Gex a PS Vita right now. Okay. Got on your Vita. Um, you don't want to play a game where a gecko voiced by Dana Gould makes random Austin Powers references? No. no. At least Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, which is not a good video game. At least that's like weird and British. So it's got the weird Britishness of it. But like, I don't need Gex. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm good. That that is that is uh, act, factually not my bag, baby. It's not my bag at all. Um, but yes, uh, strike stuff's going on uh, even more so, uh, and it's great. There's a lot of good energy there and hopefully it will lead to proper compensation for people that work incredibly hard uh, that would be fantastic uh, it, you know it, it it certainly is a possibility that the that the uh cooperative action like that uh could work out uh we'll see uh and a reminder for folks um, if you are, uh, if you are in a union, yes, if you are in a union, as John says, if you're, you are in a union, right? Uh, you as an individual reserve the right to not cross a picket line as a union member, another picket line as a organization depending on the union they can or cannot do a sympathy strike or they can or cannot encourage you to not cross the picket line uh depends on depends on the strength of your own union but as an individual union member you of course reserve the right to just be like no not not gonna do it um and i would i would you know, if you are a union member, I would say, go, you know, great. Um, there has been some discussions of people talking about like, what is crossing the picket line? What is not, what is scab work? What isn't scab work? Like, what do they want from us? And I'll just make it very clear. You'll be able to find these on Twitter. If you go to Adam Conover's uh, Twitter page or my Twitter page for retweets and stuff like that. Adam's been a good resource because he's a loud dude and because his work on television is saying uncomfortable and annoying truths. So people look to him. He is a good mouthpiece because um, he is an affable nerd. So uh, uh, he is a good mouthpiece for these kinds of things. But yeah, um, the, the uh, Writers Guild and SAG-AFTRA at this very time for members, no working on shows, 
no promoting shows. So if you go to San, if you still want to go to San Diego Comic Con, um, yes, the, 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 I'm going to get to that in a moment. Uh, if you're still going to San Diego Comic Con, hey, don't don't be on a panel. Don't promote things that came out. That's on them, right? No new work, whatever. Uh, there are lots of rules of what you can and can't do, and what, how you can and can't work. Uh, and the and and the two guilds are very happy to answer questions. Those are for guild members. For non-guild members, for people who are actors who work outside of it and all that, uh, it is, hey, just so you know, if you're not in the guild and or in the union and you start trying to pick up scab work, they reserve the right to never let you in that union. So... You know, it's like fucking figure that shit out for yourself if that's the risk you are interested in taking or not. Now, for people who are not in those fields, what's the deal? What, how do you work this? As John says, strike funds. Supporting a strike fund is a great way to support the people who are doing this. Sharing their message on social media. When, inevitably, someone in your family or your friend or a coworker starts blaming rich, quote unquote, rich actors who are millionaires. All of them are millionaires when statistically 80% of folks in the guild do not qualify for the minimum to have health care provided by SAG after. Uh, and writers are in a far worse position. Um, if, you know, if, if you are in the company of people who start blaming them, just, you know, remind them that, ev you know, 97% of actors are closer to the, make closer to the amount of money you make in your job. You're actually angry at the corporations, not the people. And you should redirect that to CEOs. Yes. Yes. Uh, matching strike funds. So, uh, Boycotts. No one is asking you to boycott. Now you, you as an individual, you as a person watching this stream right now, watching the archive later on YouTube or Twitch, you can, of course, make a decision that's right for you. If you don't want to go see Barbie, don't see Barbie. You, you want to cancel your Netflix? Cancel your Netflix. There are shows that people worked very hard on that they will also not be promoting that they would like to see do well because they worked very hard on it. So they would prefer that you, if you could, support stuff. Now, future things, scab work, you call out that scab work, right? If you see some motherfucking content creators on the red carpet, you raise hell about that shit. If you know, if you if you follow someone on Instagram who is at the premiere of fucking uh, the new Disney movie, or the Haunted Mansion movie, and you see people like some YouTuber that you follow talking about it and like, oh, I got all this stuff and doing all that, that's fucking scab work. And you call them out on it. Like that's that's where it is, right? If you, if you listen to a podcast that talks about movies and they talk about a movie that came out this year or next month, eh, that's fucking fine. That's probably, you're all right. If you make a podcast about bad movies, maybe don't talk about movies that are coming out right now. You know, it's probably okay, but you could wait. Uh... Yeah, no, um, uh, Ron Perlman's net worth is, by some accounts, under $10 million. Which is a lot of money. But also, that's not a lot of money when you think about the movies that Ron Perlman has been in. And the very successful TV shows that Ron Perlman has been in. When you think about the work that Ron Perlman has done... Less than $10 million is not a lot of fucking money. That's kind of weird, right? 
Like you want to say that like, you want to say that Hellboy doesn't have a ton of mo- doesn't have the ton of money that you would expect Hellboy to have, right? So even if you're saying like, oh, well, you know, he's talking about these CEOs, but look how much he makes. It's like, okay. Well, there's 160,000 actors out there. And how many of those are exponentially wealthy? Because you don't know them. You don't know who those people are. Like 160,000 people in that union. Not all of them have Ron Perlman money. They just don't. A lot of them got, oh, I, a lot of them got, ooh, I booked a national commercial and we get insurance. My kids are getting braces this summer. They're like that kind of money at best. They're that kind of money. That's what they're going for. Ooh, this TV show bought this TV show got bought out a bunch of episodes that I was on got bought out in France and I'm getting another $150 payout for that sweet like that's where we're at yes uh uh Mew, uh Mew Yabby, that's what I said there is no boycott uh that that what I was trying to be specific about is there has been no call for a boycott but you as an individual can, of course, make the choice if you want to make the choice. If you don't feel comfortable going to the movies right now, then don't. If you don't feel comfortable uh, uh, paying for a Netflix Netflix subscription or a Hulu subscription, then don't. I think that's fine. You want to do that? The people that work hard on things would like you to see those things. And also, a lot of those streamers laid off their marketing department. So you don't even know that those are shows that exist unfortunately and that's the real that's the real shame right that like a bunch of stuff because the actors who are on strike because they aren't going to be out there promoting those things themselves there is no promotion of those things because a lot of streaming uh, shows don't have any budgets behind them for promotion they rely on the free labor of actors because nobody fucking gets paid to do that shit so when i say nobody i don't mean nobody right part of julia roberts contract is um is the money uh that she said that part of her deal right if you book julia roberts for your movie part of her deal is a negotiation about appearances how many can be done uh, you know, streamed, uh, you know, from her, from her location, how many have to be in person, how many junkets she'll do. But a lot of actors, they just get a call from their agent going, Hey, um, you're in LA, right? Yeah. Well, uh, we got you, we got you a thing on a morning show and a couple of things and all that. And that's not, that's not paid. They're not going to get that. They're not getting anything like that. You know, like that's just, uh, as, as, as you say, market department sort of just turn to descending actors uh, on often unpaid interviews. Yeah. Like maybe if you're lucky, if you're doing upfronts for a network, they'll fly you out because they want to have you there for the upfront. Like that's best case scenario. So it's, it's a weird thing. Um, one of the, one of the things that I thought was actually kind of fucking cool uh, about all these strike stuff uh, is that um, uh, during the uh, the beginning of the writer strike? Because now it's the writer strike and the the uh, uh, SAG after strike. Um, is there's a, a wrestler uh, Ryan Nemeth whose gimmick he's he's Dolph Ziggler's real life brother. Uh, he looks they look very similar. It's weird, um, but Ryan has the uh, gimmick Hollywood Hunk Ryan Nemeth. So Hollywood Hunk when he was in L.A went to the picket lines to interview people. Um, and they're fun because like got the message across, got the word out there. And the people that are going to see those, those interviews are diehard wrestling fans. They're diehard wrestling fans enough that they're watching a YouTube series that is kind of real and kind of full of jokes and bits. Uh, the, the bit was very funny because he would be like, 
uh, and who's your favorite wrestler? And then they would say his name. And he was like, yeah. He's like, yeah. Oh, and, and then he was act surprised. He'd be like, oh, it's me. Oh, but it was really nice. And I was like, there's somebody who's watching this video. There's many people watching the video that like, don't even think about the fact that people write the stuff that they watch. They just don't engage with that part, right? So we, they put some faces to them to things and you say like, oh, wait, this is one of the people that made a show I like. They should get shit. They should fucking get the shit they need. And it's, it's humanizing in a way that I enjoy. And yes, it would be so great. I mean, any wrestler that was part of a union would be incredible. Um, but also... Uh, I thought it was funny because somebody was saying like um, storyline wise, uh, Drew McIntyre is going to miss uh, Raw because he's shooting a movie, which is true. He was supposed to be shooting a movie on Monday um, and like he ain't shooting that movie. That movie's not being filmed because it's a union gig. So I'm like, I wonder if they're going to make him wrestle instead or if he just gets that Monday off. Uh, but I thought that was a funny little thing where they're like, even as of last week, WWE was like, he was like, oh, well, I can't help you. I can't watch your back next week because I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to be here. And they're like, he's shooting a movie, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, no, he's, he's not, he's, he's shooting a movie with Dave Batista. He's not making that shoot. That, that shoot is not happening. Uh, would Vince rather shut down WWE than allow a union to happen? Uh, yeah, Vince would shut down and open up a new company before he let a union, he let uh, wrestlers unionize. He would change, he would vault, null and void every contract that existed and change everything. And also his new, the new owners of the company would also never, never, they would go out of their way to make sure that couldn't happen because it would um, be bad for business. It would fundamentally change the wrestling business. Uh but uh, it's there. Yeah, we're light years away from that. Unfortunately, it would be great, but we're we're so far away from that. Um, all right, we're gonna take a pause for the cause. I'm gonna talk to y'all about ways you can support the channel. Um, if you haven't been to a stream before and you don't know what I'm about to do here, my stream, I should say specifically. Uh, so I don't have sponsors, right? I don't have, uh, you know, I'm not. I, I've never had any sponsors. I've gotten some free video game codes on occasion. Um, with the with the hope that I would stream the game, but never assigned any deals of like, oh, we're giving you this game in exchange for you doing that. It's always just been like people in PR for companies being like, oh, hey, here's a code. Um, but I've never received a model kit, never got sponsored by any companies or anything like that. Uh, I continue to do this thanks to your generosity. And so I'm going to talk about ways you can support the channel if you're so inclined. Everything I'm about to mention here is optional. You don't have to do any of this if you don't want to. You watching is incredible because when I started this stream tonight, uh, there was at one point where we had three viewers and we're up to 15 and that's so much more than three. Uh, so that's the very kind of you. Uh, we're going to get back to building, of course, and talk about some anime because uh, I got two shows to chat with you about. Uh, but right now I did want to just take an opportunity to talk about ways you can support the channel if you'd like to. Um, as Um John just threw in there, uh, being a subscriber is the easiest way to support what I do here. If you want it, so if you are a subscriber, uh, you can throw the bear cave, the leg of the scythe, and if you're a tier two subscriber, you get the uh, blue emote. Uh, you get those lovely emotes made by Zandra. You don't see ads, which is really nice. Uh, and that's like I said, um, that's the easiest way to support what I do here is through this. You could also use your Prime Gaming token if you have Amazon Prime linked with your Twitch. You get that token, and you can use that for anybody on Twitch that's an affiliate or a partner. What about this guy? You could do it. You could help out me. Uh, that, that, that is a, a way you could go. Now, that's not the only way to support me, right? Uh, gifting a sub is also a thing you could do. Bobby Dice Roller gifted so many subs this month. It's ridiculous. Uh, and and uh, Shot Point and Aristofan also gifted subs, which is lovely. That's not the only way to support what I do here because I have other ways like my Patreon at patreon.com slash Pat Bear. There's a $1, $3, $5, and $10 tier. There are different rewards for the different tiers. Consider joining the old Patreon. And you can see what the different tiers get if you want to do that. Uh, let's see. Also, we got the Patreon. What's the other thing that I want to tell you about? Um... 
Oh yeah, YouTube. I got a YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Pat Bear. You can head over to my YouTube channel if you wanted to do that. Uh, subscribing on YouTube is free. But there's a membership if you want to join. And for $2 a month, uh, $2 a month, you get to see uh, my Wednesday video series. You get to see any of those Wednesday videos a day early. It's a little something something. Um, let's see. Uh, what other things do I want to say? Those are all ways to monthly, like every month, support what I do here. But what if you just wanted to do it once once in a while? Well, you could always do a direct donation to PayPal or Stream Elements or Coffee. You could make a, uh, a direct donation once in a while. And everything I make through direct donations, through YouTube, through Patreon, through Twitch, all goes into a fund. And I use money from that fund to buy model kits and equipment, but mostly model kits. And I've got a bunch of model kits waiting for me right over there to build. Uh, but I've got a kit that was bought off, uh, but it was uh, purchased um through USA Gundam store. I'll talk about that first because uh, Dustin picked up this. Uh, well, he didn't pick up this guy. I was just saying, I'll explain it. He went to, this is what Dustin did. Dustin went to USA Gundam store, either started an account or already had an account. I don't know which. Bought a gift card, got a gift card code, and then sent me a whisper here on Twitch with that gift card code. And I, Picked out a kit that was around the, the money that it was sent. Uh, I had to pay a little for shipping, which is fine. Uh, not complaining about that. Uh, and use that money to buy this, the Zoart Heavy. So this was bought with that gift card code. Now, that's the most complicated way to support me. There are other ways to support me that are not as complicated. And I'll mention that right now. Uh, the easiest way to support me is through my Amazon wish list. Uh, and I've got a bunch of stuff on there. I've got Lego sets and I got model kits. I got inexpensive kits. I got expensive kits. Uh, and anything that's bought through USA Gundam Store or through my Amazon wish list, uh, I make a dedicated video talking about it. It's called a mailbag video for my YouTube. And it jumps the queue because the next thing I build. So I've got a Lego set that, that Harold picked up for me for my birthday. I'm going to work on that next. And then once that's done, then I'll go back to my backlog. And I got a bunch of stuff in the backlog. But yeah, uh, if you look at the list, I've got all kinds of different stuff there. Inexpensive kits, expensive kits, kits that are never on sale, kits that have uh, free shipping, all kinds of different stuff. Um, uh, uh, so plenty of stuff from Witcher Mercury that I ha haven't built yet. Um, uh, at least one kit from Iron Blood Orphans that I haven't built yet. That'll be the last thing from Iron Blood Orphans I need to build. A bunch of different stuff. I always update the list. I try to keep it in price order. There's some gear at the bottom because maybe you just want me to have... I don't know. I don't think anyone's ever going to buy it. It's okay if no one ever does because I think it's funny. There's an on-air sign. And I think it would be very funny if I had to install behind me over my bed probably because I would put it like where the photo or... Uh, yeah, the photo of uh, uh, the Gohan model kit that I have framed for no good reason. I would put a like a sign in between those things that said on the on air. I don't think anyone should, I don't think anyone should buy that. I'd rather you buy me a model kit, but I like having things that are not model kits on my wish list. Uh, and then my alternative to my Amazon wish list is my throne wish list. Uh, and throne, there's not a lot of model kits on throne. It's mostly gear there, but I have turned on the surprise gifts. So if you want to, I think it's category driven, so you can buy stuff in certain categories. So if you want to buy me a surprise gift on Throne, I have opened up that Pandora's box. Who the fuck knows about that? You just buy me Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I guess, if you wanted it or something. That is an example. Or like, I don't know, a lightning to USB-C cable. I don't know. You could do that. Uh, I just think that is very funny that that, that is a thing that Throne has. Um... So take a look at, at all those. Those are all the ways to support me with money. We're going to get back to building really soon. Uh, I have a Discord. You can join my Discord. Uh, and I, I would love it if you joined the Discord. I post build photos at the end of every stream. People post stuff they're working on. It's a nice little Discord. It's very chill. Some days no one posts at all. So if, you, if you're like, oh, I can't join another like busy Discord. Eh, it's, mine's not. A couple of video links. And then we'll get back to building. And we'll talk about some anime. Uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, I have a new episode coming up on Monday, 
But the current Pat Bears Anime Club that's up there is my 100th episode, which is my spring wrap-up slash summer preview, where I talked about all the shows from last season and all the shows from this season right before they started. Uh, And we're going to, at the end of this stream, in 45 minutes or so, we're actually going to go raid uh, over to Loading Ready Run because Beach Dairy is doing his um, uh, roundup. He also does a roundup, and we watch different things, so it might be interesting to go see that. He watches a lot more movies than I do, uh, and I'm sure at least one show that I thought was, was uh, there's no way I would watch, he checked out. Uh, so it's always nice to get a different perspective. We're going to go raid him. Uh, and then Barely Rehearsed is an ongoing video series where every week um, I write and perform a comedy piece that I, uh, it's barely rehearsed, but it is rehearsed at some point. I have done some writing and some prep for it, and then I have performed it. Uh, and this one is a very short, silly idea. It's called The Proposal. Uh, it is a, it's a quick joke, in and out. I think you'll like it. So check that out. Now, I need to drink some water, and then we need to talk about some anime. So we'll do those two things together. Um, and I'm going to dramatically transition to the overhead camera so that we can start working on the left arm of the Zoart Heavy. But I have to drink some water, and we'll dramatically transition right now. (sighs) Sometimes I don't take enough breaks during the stream to drink water, so I built one in for myself. To explain that for new people. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's get into this. I, I want to check something real quick. Okay. okay, 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 okay. Um, programming note. I, for, I, uh, I want to just quickly say my six year anniversary stream. I'm sorry. I have one more thing to promote before we can talk about anime. It's this coming Thursday from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. We're working on the death site hell. Uh, high grade, the premium Bandai kit that came out uh, that is shipping to people right now. I'm sure some people got it earlier, but it's coming out to the people that pre ordered it, um, like myself. Uh, but building that kit uh, and celebrating my six years as a streamer, which is wild. Um, if you ask me, then when I was just starting out, uh, so please come hang out for that. Uh, hey, Pat, do you think you will be streaming? Six year, uh, do you think you'll be celebrating a six year streaming anniversary? I would have said yes, because at the time I was only streaming once a week. So I think I would have kept up that schedule. Now, obviously, I started building as there was support for it and interest for it, and also my own desire to do it. And then when I lost my job in 2019 and uh, uh, my full time gig in 2019, I was looking for more things to do and more ways to kind of. Uh, interact with folks uh it became like an essential part of this and then also of course during the pandemic and now in the uh pandemic and slash quote-unquote post-pandemic world uh it is really nice to continue to have a connection with people uh and also a little bit of consistency in my life because i don't have the most consistency these days unfortunately uh so I'm, I'm thrilled that I still get to do this. I'm thrilled that people still watch the streams, that they support financially when they can. Uh, but mostly it's just lovely that people uh, still tune in. And new people. We still get new people. We didn't, we've never, uh, there was a period there where subscriber growth stalled, right? And I've combated that a bit with subscriber growth uh, stalling by doing more, uh, stunt streams, uh, more uh, subathons, which encourages not. Th- here's the thing I've learned now after doing two subathons, one in February and one last month, is that I don't think that not everybody sticks around, right? There's a lot of gifted subs and a lot of like one time subscribers, and I think that's fantastic. But there's like a not zero amount of people that are just like, yeah, I'll keep subbing to Pat. I like Pat. And that's lovely. Um, uh, and that's, that's been really fun. Uh, you know, obviously just continuing to do this work has been, 
uh, great. I really enjoy it. I've been able to build like bucket list kits like the uh, heavy arms that's back here. Um, and we'll go to uh, just real quick. The heavy arms that's over here. That is the uh, heavy arms from Endless Waltz. The master grade of that that I never thought I would be able to build. Uh, but managed to, to do it on stream, you know, and then I've gotten the Eagle unit and put the Eagle unit extra stuff on it. So it is the, uh, it is a kit bashed heavy arms. It's like, nah, I never thought I would have built that. I built two perfect graves. I never thought in my life I would build a perfect grade. Are you fucking kidding me? Never in my life did I think I would build two of them. No. I got into model kit building, like, right? Like, I, I, when I got into model kit building, I was just like, oh, that's something I'll do for a little while. You know, I had done it in the 90s, and I did it again. It's a, that's a weird thing to say. I did it in the 90s, and then I didn't do it in uh, college, and I didn't do it when I first moved to New York. And then I got back into it for a very brief period of time, because uh, I had a friend that was into model kits, and I got back into it. And then I got into it again to stream basically I got, I got back into that so i hadn't you know so it's like every i've taken some fucking breaks is what i'm saying uh anyway we'll i'll talk more about that on uh thursday i'm sure but right now we need to talk about two anime shows that i've been watching now both of these shows are actually shows that that air on wednesday but uh we're talking about them tonight because i have too many shows that are air on tuesday wednesday and thursday uh, and I have no shows that I'm watching that air on Friday or Saturday because I didn't really, I'm not really enjoying the ones that come out on those days. So uh, I decided I would watch these uh, for Saturday streams, uh, which is, I think, worked out okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, so we'll talk about them. The first episode of St. Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence was out. Uh Oh, a fun series. I'm going to say right off the bat. Um, this is uh, Doga Kobo Studio uh, Studios. Uh, they had the, what some people would consider the anime of the year last season. Oshinoko. Uh, the front runner in many people's minds as the best new series, at least to say. Even if I personally think that Witch for Mercury is, you know, the best show of the year. Um but Oshinoko, obviously a huge fucking hit. Uh, Doka Kobo, they do a lot of like slice of lives and romance stuff. And some isekai, but like the like chiller isekai fantasy stuff. And uh, this is a fantasy series, but it seems to be like a slice of life kind of romantic comedy-ish thing. Uh, about two religious characters you got Pastor Lawrence, and you've got Cecilia, the saint. Uh, so we're in a fantasy world here. We don't know much about like the world and, and world building stuff yet. We'll get more world building. Right now, uh, the main thing we know is that there is uh, some sort of uh, uh, abilities that saints have, some kind of magic powers. Uh, and then also there is a point where we discover, oh, um, wait, sorry. I do this wrong here. Um, there are angels. Angels are out there, apparently. <laughs> um, so I'm going to jump around a little bit in this one because this is like a lot of small little stuff happened here. I have not read the source material of this, but I would not be surprised if the source material is like a four panel uh, thing or like mini comics or something. But uh, basically, the gist of it is, Cecilia has a crush on Lawrence. Always has. Lawrence found her. She suddenly appeared in this village. She's the only saintess in the village. She suddenly appeared, and he's been looking out for her. Now, maybe he's kind of got like a fatherly or older brother affection for her. But also, people in the town fucking know what's up. They know about the feelings, and I think a lot of them are rooting for her. But there's just like a lot of silliness there. Um uh also a thing to mention about cecilia when it's time for work and people are there and there's expectations of her she's a dedicated hard-working go-getter 
As soon as those people leave and the job is done, oh, Cecilia is a lazy bones, doesn't want to do shit. Uh, and also is very bored because Lawrence doesn't let her do like a lot of tasks that she would enjoy doing, uh, like cooking or, or helping out in the fields because he's an overprotective figure in her life. It seems like, um, they go on and they go, uh, to tour some homes to talk to some people. There is a very fucking funny scene where, uh, they go to meet this woman and a bunch of kids show up and they're like, Hey, Satis, do a miracle. Did it do a miracle for us? And like Lawrence is like, ah, ah it's going to turn out bad. So she does a, a, a card trick, which is technically a miracle. <laughs> and I just, I just thought that was like such a funny bit of business and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do a mir miracle. Here you go. Ooh, is this your card? Or, it wasn't exactly that, but it was, it was similar to that. And I was like, all right, that's pretty good. That's pretty funny. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a whole thing at um, a clothing shop where there's a wedding dress out there. And basically, it's, it's heavily implied. They're like, hey, when it's your time to get a wedding dress, you just let me know. Because they all know the feelings they have for one another. Um, they talk about the how they met. Um and they're cooking together and how Cecilia likes to get herself in quote unquote harmful situations, which we've had no immediate explanation for. There's also a thing where like cats are afraid of Lawrence. And I don't know if that's like, or going to come back up, but it happens. It was weird. Uh, and then there's, Hey guys, uh, it's raining and they don't have, they don't have an umbrella. So they're out in the rain. Uh, and then a woman and her friend see them and they offer an umbrella. And then Cecilia's like, come on an umbrella with me. And it's like, oh, we're flirting like this in the first episode. Huh? All right. Uh, and then the rain stops. So no go, no go on the flirting. But then anyway, um, he picks her up so that her feet don't get, uh, you know, muddy. Carries her there. And it was very cute. Uh, and there's a whole thing where, um, uh, she, she kind of, she tells a sleep, she sees him taking a nap and she basically tells him in his sleeping form about how she has a lot of affection for him. And it's very cute. It's well animated it is a, a lovely little series. Do I think this is for everybody? Of course not. There's no anime that's for everybody, but I would say this. If you're looking for something a little saccharine sweet, you could do a lot fucking worse than St. Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence. This is going to be one of those shows that, like, I'm not going to know a lot of people that are also watching it. But for friends of mine that like a certain vibe, like, we don't have a... This year, we've had Otaku Elf is the closest we've had to girls doing things as, a, as a, a, you know, any any show like that. And that's not what this is, but but it is a little romance show, nice slice of life series, uh, and it could get dramatic. I don't think it is. It doesn't seem to be the vibe. Like, again, it could, but I, I think it's mostly just, like, pretty fucking chill and cute. Uh, so, yeah, St. Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence on Crunchyroll, I'm, uh, I'm down. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to watch it. Now, shifting gears to Undead Murder Farce, which I believe the uh, manga is in, entitled Undead Girl Murder Farce, but they chose to change the name for the anime. I don't know why, but they did make that choice. Uh, they're going with Undead Murder Farce. The premise is, we've got our main dude. Uh, uh, what's this fuck? What the fucker's name? Um... Uh, oh yeah, uh, Suguru. We got Suguru. Suguru is a uh, half demon, and he is half oni, I should say. And he is shortening his lifespan, uh, and he is do he is doomed to go insane, or to die. And then he runs into. 
uh, Aya. And Aya is an immortal. And Aya's like, hey, if you help me, I will give, I will grant you immortality and cure you of your uh, inevitable uh, insanity that, that is coming. Uh, and I should also point out that Aya is headless. She is a head in a birdcage because somebody stole uh, 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 her, cut off her head and stole her body. And apparently the person that did that is also somehow connected uh, to um, uh, our boy. And he would also like to track her down, uh, track that this person down. Um, something to do with how he's half, de half Oni is also related to that. So they got a common goal. She's a world famous detective. He is now uh, her assistant. Apparently... Uh, they've been traveling through, you know, Japan and Europe uh, and a bunch of stuff happened that we didn't see because that was the first episode was like a lot of fighting and figuring things out. And then in this episode, we're in France uh, and apparently they've been uh, uh, hopping around Europe, making a name for themselves. And they have been hired to help out a vampire lord uh, who is also a lord. Um named uh, Godard uh, because Godard's wife, who was also a vampire, was murdered. Uh, and apparently, Drac so this is stuff, this is all, there's so much fucking exposition in this episode, which is a bummer because it's good otherwise. Um, Dracula got murdered. And so now vampires are trying to like assimilate with humanity and put on a brave front. So like they're still going out to like participate in hunts so they can provide for things and, and yada, yada, yada. And then somebody went and killed this vampire with a silver stake. Um, and this is the first murder uh, since they've been among humans. Uh, and it could be somebody uh, uh, unhappy with the allegiance or the alliance, I should say. So they hire our friends who apparently there's also a, a reference to them fighting a golem in Belgium. And it's like, hey, you can't just say like, hey, anime, fucking anime. Listen up. If. If there's a fight with a golem in Belgium, I'd like to see it. I don't want to be told about that shit. I want to see it. We don't get to see it. Maybe we will eventually. Um, but anyway, apparently they have been hired to uh, to help out with this murder investigation. Um, there's some servants. There's the, the son. We're going to try to figure out who killed Hannah. Uh, we find out more about her. She loved fixing things, fixing stuff up. That was her big thing. Um, and of course... A vampire body disintegrates, so they don't have, they don't have the, uh, they can't do an autopsy or anything. But there's photos of the body were taken. Uh, and Aya believes that she was killed in her sleep. Uh, and they find a, a dusty, empty bottle. And there's blood on the lid. And the, the silver stake is still there. Uh... And apparently, apparently, if a vampire did it and they handled that stake, then their hand would get burned and it would take more than a week to recuperate. Uh, so if they, it is a vampire, if they could probably figure that out. And then after the, pre, after the credits, well, there's like a, a girl who gets scared by him or whatever. But then after the credits, there's a vampire hunter with a crossbow that enters the scene. And that's so we're going to introduce to another character, even though vampires have, you know, integrated with society. There's still apparently vampire hunters out there. And so undead murder farce, or as the manga is called undead girl murder farce. I thought episode one was better than episode two because episode two was a lot of exposition. Uh, I think we're probably going to get settled into the 
Uh, it's not a monster of the week because they didn't solve this problem. So it is a, a problem that they will solve over the course of a few episodes. Maybe, hey, for all I know, the whole season of this show could be solving this vampire murder. I'm not, I don't think that's the case, but it could be. Um, but the animation is goddamn gorgeous. The vibe is so good. It is one of the best shows this season. It is generally like, when I looked at it, I went like, oh, there's a, a weird guy and a, a severed head detective. And eh, I think I'm going to pass. But so many people I know were like, no, nah, no, 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 Pat, Pat, Pat. Like they saw me talking about it, uh, you know, in video and were like, no, you got to check this out. Uh, and they were right because it's really good. Um, it, it is one of my favorite shows this season. Which is funny to say, my two favorite shows this season are, so far anyway, are Undead Murder Farce and Reborn as a Vending Machine. But also, Reborn as a Vending Machine is fucking great. It's so stupid. Uh, but it commits to its silliness. It Reborn as a Vending Machine understands that it is making a very dumb program. It, it is aware of what it is making. And how it looks. And it's just like, yeah, this is goofy. Enjoy. And I do enjoy. I think it is very fun. All right. So let's uh, let's start working on the legs. We made a bunch of progress on this kit. We are done with the top half of, half of this kit. We still have legs, uh, a waist, or legs, feet, a waist. And then we've got to do... Uh, Many, many er, weapons. Waist and then uh, a waist skirt, the side skirts. Uh, and then, yeah, we got, then we got to build some weapons to put on this kit. Got some backpack mounted weapons and then a gun and a beam saber. A fairly large gun. Yeah, so we've got more to do with this kit, but we'll start there. Looks like we're building the right leg first and then the left leg. So we're not going to do anything symmetrical here at the same time, which which is fine. That's a, that's an okay thing. We'll get into that. Um, now is the part of the stream, friends, where I'd like to hear from you. What are you watching right now? What are you playing? What, 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 what you, what's got you going? Uh, while you uh, type in some words here, I'll say... Still playing Hearthstone. Right now, there's like a mini thing where they're pushing people to play Battlegrounds. So I've been playing some Battlegrounds in Hearthstone, which is like their like auto chess uh, uh, version. Uh, and I don't love it. I've never loved Battlegrounds. That's not my you know preferred uh, game style or gameplay. But I've been playing it and getting some free packs, and that's okay. We are a week in change, I believe, away from the next expansion because the... Um, the mini set kind of came late in the season, uh, the Hearthstone season. So the next expansion's right around the corner. Uh, and I have so much gold for it. I have enough gold that I can get like a bunch of packs and also uh, have enough gold for the mini set. And I'll be able to stash away like 2,000 gold for that. Uh, I'm probably going to get the battle pass. I usually get the battle pass for Hearthstone. I like it. Uh, um... I've been playing more of Mars First Logistics. Uh, banging my head against Mars First Logistics. I really enjoy it, but it's a lot. There's just a lot going on. It is, uh, it's frustrating sometimes. I take breaks. Sometimes I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to skip this job. I'm going to go to this other job. Uh, but I, I, do, I do enjoy it. Uh, I'm not much farther from where we left off on Tuesday. Uh, but again, I, I have been enjoying my time with it. It's a fun time. Um, that's kind of the only games I've pay, played in the last two days were that. I haven't started anything new. I don't have anything new in the agenda. Um, I'm almost, I've almost beat Diablo 4. I'll say that. I am close to defeating Diablo 4. Uh, oh, it, it is almost time. I've, uh, I've had some good runs of luck there and then I'll be able to beat it. And then I can just like start a new character and skip all the story stuff. If I want to start a new character and skip one stuff and try out some other classes, uh, which I'm not like 
super thrilled about, but I'll do, I'll certainly do. But yeah, I've been enjoying my time with that. Uh, and we're all, and yeah, the season hasn't started there. Uh, I'm not super enthused with that because I'm mostly just like running around uh, and having a good time with, with, you know, with my character. So we'll see, you know, how far I get with that. But I'd like to beat it. So uh, I am aiming for that. That's my next goal. And now I'm going to read what y'all have had to say and I'll comment on it. Uh, uh, Shot Point says about to start Jesus Kaisen season two. It's been okay. Um, so I have lo- the art style is awesome. Obviously, great studio uh, working on it. Looks really good. No, no complaints there. Um, I'm going in with the understanding that, all, I, and this is not me because I haven't read it. A lot of people don't love where Jujutsu Kaisen goes as a show or as a story in the manga. And obviously that's not saying that word for word it's going to be the same, but I have like managed expectations about like story stuff. But as far as characterization goes, like it's still a fantastic series. So I, I have been certainly enjoying my time with, with that. Even if I know that I might come to be a little bummed. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of ready for it. Uh, Harold says, I started watching Ted Lasso. I'm midway through season two. E- enjoy yourself with that, Harold. Uh, Ted Lasso is a is a fine series. There's a, co- a couple times where I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. It's, at this point, you got to assume, like maybe Ted needs to assimilate a little better at, at one point. But overall, overall, that's still, that's still a fun show. Um, that's still a good time. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shot Point also says, playing Planet Crater right now while listening. Heck yeah. I hope you're having a good time with the old Planet Crater. Um, yeah, you know, people want to play games while I'm doing this stuff. That's totally fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind being your podcast. Uh, Lord Crashton says, I watched uh, uh, Nimona on Netflix, which is based on a Tumblr comic series. Pretty good stuff. I have heard good things. I haven't checked that out, but I have heard good things. Uh, John says, wife and I are moving over to watch Outlaw Star, and I'm going to be starting uh, Fuga Melodies of Steel 2 after playing the first game last week. So... John, I know that Fuga Me- Melodies of Steel 2 is a video game, but that does sound like a made-up video game. It sounds like you just did a word salad at me, John. That you were like, oh yeah, I'm playing Fuga Melodies of Steel 2. Nah, that sounds fucking fake. It's not fake. Also, enjoy Outlaw Star. I have no idea if Outlaw Star holds up. But it's space pirate shit. I mean, they're not pirates, but you know what I'm saying. It The song is very good. It's a spaceship with arms, and that's very silly in a way that I can get behind. You got yourself a cat girl. You got yourself a mysterious lady. You got yourself a samurai. That You got that thing where the samurai's like, I'm waiting around to kill you thing. That doesn't make any sense. Um... Yeah, mysterious people, uh, a fun main character. I don't know if Outlaw Star holds up, but I, I got a special place in my heart for that show. That show had good energy. Uh, I think it, if I remember correctly, and no spoilers, of course, even though it's an old show. I don't know. I think it did a lot of like leaps of logic to get to its ending. But other than that, I think it's fun. Um, let's see, uh, Dirty says, hey, Dirty, uh, uh, waiting on D4 season start this week and BG3 full release in three more weeks. Yes, the Baldur's Gate. Enjoy your everything, your Uber game of Baldur's Gate, your final boss game. Uh, good luck with that. It seems like there's so much for that game. That game just seems like it has so much going on. Uh, so many hours. Uh, Lord Crescent is playing more Diablo 4, which I got close to just quitting on when I was nearly done with a stronghold right, class quest when the server's disconnected. Oh, that's a killer. Yeah. End up coming back the next day and, and, and still just okay. 
I don't think it's doing anything to make me like more than Diablo 3, as much as it feels like work with regards to skill points and keeping up on everything. So Diablo 4 definitely does feel like it has more busy work than 3 did. Um, I enjoy it. I like 3. I like 4. Uh, I mean, I don't think I'm ever going to go back to 3. Was that 38? Did I pull the... No, yeah, that's 38. Uh, do I, do I, you know, I don't think I'll ever go back to, to playing three, but I, I do have an appreciation for what four is doing. I, I like it just fine. It's got a serviceable story, serviceable. That's a weird word for me to say for some reason, serviceable story. Uh, it's doing just enough stuff for me to be like, yeah, all right. Um, cutscenes are fucking good in Diablo four. You know, stop me if you heard this before. Uh, they made good cutscenes for that video game. So it's like, yeah, all right. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, Harold hasn't watched Outlaw Star since college, and John says, I haven't seen it since middle school. We'll see if it holds up. Yeah. I mean, I remember enjoying it. Uh, I thought the characters were good, and it was a, a fun series. And again, I think it, it, Suffered a little bit towards the end of it, but overall, it was a fun one. I don't think we're going to finish. I don't, I don't, we might, we might finish this kit at the end of Monday stream. Because we're still have to do the other leg, the waste, and the weapons. So I don't want to say for sure we're finishing it up, but uh, we might, we might finish this up on Wednesday. Uh, is it the wrong piece? Yes, it's the wrong piece. This is the front piece for this. Yeah, that's six. I need seven. The back piece of it. Let's see. Uh, Monday, more working on this, of course. Tuesday, CPU versus CPU matches in WWE 2K23. Uh, we have not done one of those in a while. We built me on my birthday. We built me, and so I, so I will be competing the... Character representation of Pat Bear, the creator wrestler of Pat Bear, will be competing in uh, in the Build with Bear uh, uh, wrestling, BWBW. So, uh, yeah, so I'll be competing. All the titles will be on the line. Eight matches. I booked a few of them. I ha I need to finish booking them, but I have I have a, an idea of most of them. I've got some new creator uh, creator wrestlers that I uh downloaded that are ready to go uh, i'll be looking for more of course uh there was a bit of a bump there as people were like you know like a the aw game doesn't really have you can't share so some people are making stuff in there but they're not able to share it with people uh the most they can do is like here's how i made this as like videos people are like looking up videos of how to do what some people did uh so it did mean that a few more people have gone back to uh, WWE 2K23 to get their creations in there, which is fun for me as someone that still plays that game. Um, but yeah, so we'll do that. That'll be Tuesday. Uh, Clash of the Champions. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's Battle of the Belts is the, the other nomenclature. Oh God, there's so much wrestling to watch tonight because I'm going to watch Collision. I'm watching the, if you're like Pat, but Collision and bat Battle of the Belts is happening right now and Collision ended. Well, I'm going to watch the West Coast feed starting at 11 p.m. Watch the West Coast of that followed by the West Coast of uh, uh, the West Coast feed of. Uh, of what, what, what did I watch out that? Oh, um, of Battle of the Belts. Yeah, so Collision Battle of the Belts. I'm going to watch uh, very soon. That'll be the next thing that I, that I uh, check out. See here, um, yes, Lord Crashing said AW had a uh, battle of the belts, used to be a show that they would throw on after um, uh, Rampage, and it's like every couple months they do it, and it's just um, like all the matches are title matches. They're doing they did that tonight, it's literally happening still right now. Um, I don't know why they did after collision, but they did. So it was, there's three hours of, of professional wrestling from AEW tonight. Um, and I'm going to watch the, uh, the old West coast feed of that. Uh, 
in a minute in a bit here um i've got that ready to go when it's time which is pretty much now pretty much now i'll, I'll get into it um yeah so i think we're gonna wrap up there we did one whole leg we got to do a foot but we did the leg here and we did all the upper body so we got a lot done with this kit we might wrap this up on monday i don't know if we don't wrap this on monday we will wrap it when the heavy or when the death scythe is done because that'll be the thursday stream um i want to thank everybody for hanging out with me here on the old build with bear uh i hope you had a good time i did so i hope you're uh oh, oops wrong wrong screen oh my god i went away oops that was the wrong screen my apologies uh but yeah i hope you had a, a good time with it uh I, I again i certainly did um thank you for the raid we had earlier thank you for people that are hanging out and chose to spend some of your saturday night with me um we are going to go over to loading ready run because beach is doing his anime roundup and he's only 20 minutes into it so we've only missed a few anime shows that he's watched I believe right now he's talking about the uh, orchestra show that I did not check out. So we're going to go hang out with Beach there. I'm going to go watch wrestling, but I'll be in chat for a little bit. So feel free to come along on this raid. Uh, reminder, tomorrow, uh, sorry, not tomorrow, nothing tomorrow. Enjoy your Sunday. Monday, model kit building. Uh, Tuesday, WWE uh, CPU versus CPU matches. Thursday, my 20th, 20th. Uh, my six year anniversary. It's on my 20th anniversary. It's July 20th. So Thursday, July 20th is my six year streaming anniversary. And I hope you come hang out on that stream too. Thanks everybody for hanging out. I'll see you again in the future. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. goodbye.